we have our user service now, and this is great because we have a clear separation of concerns for our different files. We have our user list component, which is specifically made to show a user list. And on top of that, we have a user service, which is specifically meant to contact the GitHub API. This is how we're going to structure a lot of our Angular projects. Services are solely meant to connect to an external API. And components are used to grab those services, use those services, and then display the data in the templates. With that in mind, let's start using this new user service we have. We're going to say private user service. And this is just what I'm going to name this user service. And then we're going to inject the user service. And that's studly caps. And notice it automatically did the import for us. User service from dot dot slash dot dot. So it went up two folders to grab the user service. Now that we have this here on init, so when this component gets initialized, remember, we don't want to do this work inside of the constructor. The constructor is only meant to set up and inject what this component needs. On init, we're going to say this.userService dot, and notice TypeScript and Angular allows us to see what's inside of this user service. Very useful. We'll get users dot. And then since we're returning an observable, we can subscribe to it, data. And then let's console.log the data and see what's going on. We'll inspect element, go into the console, and now we have an array of 20 users, which that should be 10. Let's refresh, see what's going on here. 20 users, we'll go back into our user service. Per page 20, oh, I changed it, and we didn't change it back to the 10. So we'll change it back to 10. Immediately, our app restarts, makes that API call, and gets 10 users. All right, so our user service is doing its job perfectly. We have injected the user service into our component, and now we're using it on initialization for ng on init. Now, normally, you would say, okay, this is actually not data, that's users. I don't just want to be clear about what we're naming things. And you would bind this users to a property on this class. And that way we can show it in our template. So we're going to tell our Angular class, hey, you have a users array. It doesn't even know it's an array. We just have a property called users. And then down here, we will say this.users is equal to users that comes back from the API. All right, save that. And now let's take a look and make sure that our users are showing up. So we have this users variable here. We've bound the data coming back from the HTTP call. Let's say users. And since it is an array, let's try JSON. See if that works. Okay. So it shows the entire array of objects, which is going to be 10 objects. And now we can see those in our template. This isn't going to be really helpful. So we have to actually loop over these users. So we're going to use what's called a structural directive, div star ng if, and if users, so we're only going to show this section if we have users, and we don't even need these p tags anymore. If we have users, we're going to loop over them with ng4, so we're gonna say div star ng4, and if this is a little weird to you, this is because we're using the ES6 kind of syntax, where we say let something of something if we're trying to use an iterable, which in this case is an array, let user of users. And that's the ES6 syntax of four, of a four of loop. And that's what the Angular team decided on, and that's totally fine. So we're gonna say let user of users, user dot login, which is what the username is supposed to be right here. So we'll save that, and now we should get a list of, there we go all of our usernames. Now, this is really cool since this is returning an observable from the user service, get users, and we're subscribing to it. Something to note though, is that when this gets destroyed, we should probably unsubscribe to this observable. And that keeps our data very clean, that keeps our application lean and mean. Now that's something you don't really wanna deal with. So the Angular team allows us to do something very simple. We're gonna say, this.users is equal to user service.get users. And then up here, 
instead of let user of users, there's a pipe we can use called async. And that will unwrap this observable for us and destroy it when this component is destroyed. So we don't have to worry about the life cycle of this observable. And also our code looks a lot cleaner coming out of our ng on init. All right, this is fine and all, but let's give this a little bit more styling. We're gonna say section, class is section. Okay, and then let's close that. I'll put a container inside of this, div class container. And the cool thing about Bulma is it comes with a grid system and the grid system is working like this. You have div class columns. And then inside of this, you have div class column. And then each column will take up a certain section of this grid. We have ng if is on the column. So we only want to show the columns if we have users. And then we have ng4. Let's put that on the column itself so we can loop over the users. And each one has its own part of the grid. And I believe we could delete all of that there. There we go. So now they all show up in a line and they're all part of the grid. Now let's say we only wanted to show four on each line. We would say columns is multi-line. And this is just some Bulma classes for their grid. Column is four. And that's out of 12. So if we do is four, there will take up about three for each row. Yep, one, two, three. And I want to use a little bit more of the Bulma classes. We'll say div class card. And remember, you don't have to do any of this. You could totally just skip this entire part. If this is a little too much of the HTML template part for you, card content. And this is just from browsing the Bulma doc so long that I remember all of these cards, card content, and that looks good. Now we have seen pretty much the workflow of how you will be building Angular applications, getting data from an HTTP service, an API, and then showing that inside of your template, right? We have defined the things that we need. And if you wanted to, you could even use TypeScript to say, okay, this is gonna be an array of probably user, which you'll create a user model, which we don't have, but that'll be an array. This dot users, we bind it to the HTTP call coming out of our user service. We've injected it here. And then now we are able to loop over NGF users, let user of users, and that async pipe is important to unwrap that observable. So this is kind of the flow of an Angular application, get data, show data.